Now we're going to start moving out of the definitions and concepts into some actual question types and things that the SAT might actually ask you about a bit more explicitly. So the first set of topics is ratios and proportions. So a ratio is just, the best way to define it that I found is the relative size of two quantities or their relationship to each other. So for instance, one example of a relationship is something like there are 100 pennies to $1 or there are three feet to one yard. Now those are more units, but they're ratios too, right? For every three feet, you got to have one yard. It's there's two quantities that are locked together. There's an equivalence there. But you might see a different kind of ratio more often. So for instance, the number of pizza slices eaten. So for every two I eat, John eats three. Right? So you can write this many ways for ratios. You can write two colon three, right? For every two I eat, he eats three. You could write it in words like this. I won't write it out, but you can say for every two slices I eat, John eats three. Um, also, sometimes you'll see it in terms of almost like a fraction. You got to be very careful because this isn't a fraction in the two-thirds sense. It's a two to three ratio. And you'll see this when you set up proportions, which we're going to talk about in a, in a minute. So I could write this as two over three for the purposes of creating a proportion. But again, we'll talk about that in a second. Notice a recipe is uh, another example of a ratio. So two eggs for every one cup of milk for every three cups of flour. So notice I can have three ingredients in a ratio. It doesn't just have to be two things, though we often see just two. So uh, these are all just examples of ratios. And notice that ratios vary by common multiples up and down, right? So I can say, well, let's double my recipe. Let's have four eggs, two cups of milk, and six cups of flour, right? We're just multiplying everything by two. And this leads us to where we could, uh, what I promised, proportions, right? Proportions are just the varying of, of ratios of different ingredients, whatever they might be, different quantities varying by constant multiples. That's all proportion really is. So let's see, let's imagine we've got uh, some examples. So uh, actually, let me just write this out. So make it more explicit. So two eggs for every one cup of milk, right? I could write this, this is equivalent to, in some ways, in, in terms of the ratio at least, four eggs for every two cups of milk. Because notice this preserves the two to one ratio. I could also do eight to four. I could do 16 to eight and so on, right? It's preserving that ratio. I could then set up a proportion. I can say, well, if I have two eggs for every one cup of milk and I have 10 eggs, how many cups of milk do I have, right? That's a proportion. So I could cross multiply. I could also just see it's five just by the easy ratio. However you'd like to do it, that's just what a proportion is. It's all about ratios. Let's look at an example. 100 tea bags contain eight ounces of tea. How much do three bags of tea weigh? So let's set up a proportion. When we set up the proportion, we have to make sure that our tops and our bottoms are of the same kind, same unit. So let's write this as 100 tea bags on top gives us eight ounces of tea. Whereas here we've got three bags and we want to know how much it weighs. So what is the X? So here's our proportion cross multiply how about so we get 100x equals 24 divide both sides by 100 we get x is 0.24 ounces so that would be our answer right nothing but just ratios mixed together one little aside and we're going to talk about this with direct and indirect variation but this stuff right here this proportion stuff is directly related or directly proportional there's another kind called indirectly proportional or inversely proportional we'll talk about that in a little bit Ratio box. So the ratio box is a way of dealing with ratios in a different way. And I stole this from Princeton Review just because I think it's really handy, really clever. So I'm going to teach it to you now. It's just a way of keeping track of your ratio information and making problems pretty easy to solve because you keep track of everything you need and you, then you can give them any answer they want. So let's check this problem out. In science class, there are two boys for every five girls. If there are 35 total students in the class, how many are boys? So a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do proportions, blah, blah, blah. But let me show you the ratio box. So to set up your box, draw a non-slanted square. Oh, that's horrible. I have a lot of problems writing straight lines in this thing. I don't know why. So you create a column for each of your members, so boys and girls, and then you have a total column. So boys, girls, total. And then you create three rows. You always create three rows, regardless of how many columns you've got. So there are two boys for every five girls. In this top row, we're going to put the ratio. So it's two to five. If there are 35 total students, so this is the actual number, 
right? The, the number that are actually present. So that goes in the last row. And we put that total in this box down here. And this is what we do. The first thing we do is we find the total within the ratio. So to do that, we just add these two numbers together. We get seven. What does this mean? It means for every seven students, two are boys, five are girls. Then what we do is say, okay, well, what multiplier, this is the multiplier, right? What multiple, because this is all just a ratio being, you know, increased by a common multiple. What multiple gets us from seven to 35? Well, seven times what is 35? Seven times five is 35. And that multiplier, again, has to be the same for everything because it's a common multiple. We multiply down, we get 10 boys and 25 girls. So what does the question want to know? How many are boys? Well, it's 10. I could also give you how many are girls. I can give you what fraction are boys. I can give you a lot of different things. How many more girls are there than boys? Whatever question you want, this table gives us that information. So that's the ratio box. And we'll see examples of this in the math tactics series. So be sure you check that out. One little minor note is rates and speeds. This is one of those questions uh, or formulas that's not on the table, but it's just handy to know. Basically, just remember that speed is equal to distance over time, which we could rearrange to say that distance is speed times time. Just remember those two. Just always remember like miles per hour or kilo kilometers per hour. It's distance over time is a speed. So just remember those. They come in handy on certain problems.